and welcome back to the Kravis Center series, Young Professional Actors. We did it, so can you. I'm Katherine Boynton, and today I'm excited to introduce my friend, Ben Krieger, to talk about his experiences in professional theater. Ben was in the national tour of Pippin the Musical, The Sound of Music, and Finding Neverland. So Ben, how old are you and what grade are you going into? Uh, I just turned 16 years old and I'm going to be going into my junior year at Dreyfus School of the Arts. Great. And when and how did you get involved in musical theater? Um, I think it was in third grade. Yeah, third grade. Uh, my sister had always done musical theater at um, small community theater um, in Stewart called Starstruck. And she had done it there and she was about to start Peter Pan. Um, there at Starstruck and I was I remember being in the back seat and asking my mom who was in the front seat I was like mom can I do Peter Pan she was like she was so surprised because I, I back then I just played baseball and basketball and not like I was any good but that's what I was that's what I did back then um, and so I decided to go to Starstruck and do Peter Pan and that's how I started all thanks to my sister Charlotte so how did you get involved in professional theater um, so it started, it was after th I did three shows at Starstruck, just student theater, and then the Maltz Jupiter Theater um, in Jupiter, they do this thing called First Steps to Stardom, which is basically, um, kid, it's, they audition all their kids for all their kid parts in their season, which is five different shows, there's two plays and three musicals. And so I auditioned hoping to be Gavroche and uh, Les Mis at Maltz, um, but there was also, two other shows that I was interested in. Uh, all the musicals, really, I could have been in. There was uh, Fiddler on the Roof, Les Mis, and they had this original show called The Looking Glass. And I auditioned, and I was, I don't know how, I was super surprised, because this was still the start, but I ended up being in Looking Glass, Les Mis, and Fiddler. And Fiddler was just as like, this background character didn't have a line, I just kind of like walked around to look like a little boy in this um, town. Um, but Les Mis, I remember the audition was so scary, but I ended up getting Gavroche, and that was, that was one of my like, dream parts, and it was only like my fifth show ever, and I was so excited to do it. And then from there, I just kind of decided to go start auditioning in New York for like the professional shows. So then how did you book a role in a national tour? Um, it, was, it was when I was in Les Mis as Gavroche that somebody that my, my mom didn't know them, but we had mutual friends because just through like the stuff my sister did and, and camps and stuff like that. Um, and she reached out to us and said, I'd love um, to represent, to manage Ben and get him auditions in New York for tours and Broadway shows, off-Broadway stuff. And I remember deciding like, yeah, this is something I want to do because I had so much fun doing Les Mis with professionals and being backstage. And I didn't mind like being like one of three kids back there. It was, it was fun to be a part of something like that. Um, and so I started flying to New York. Um, my manager would fly me to New York um, on weekends during the fifth grade. I would leave, like on, I would miss school on Fridays, um, go to New York, and then I'd come back on Monday for school and I'd audition. And after um, my fifth audition, uh, I booked Pippin and it was very exciting. That's so great. So then you mentioned your friend, your mom's friend. Is that who turned into your manager, or how did, how did you Yeah, it? so she ended up being my manager um, just because she saw me in Les Mis, and she was like, she emailed my mom, like, hey, Tracy, um, I noticed we have some mutual friends. Like, I went to French Woods, which is a camp that me and my sister went to. Um, I went to French Woods as a kid. Like, I, I just loved Ben and Les Mis. I'd love to help him out and get him auditions. And so from then on, she was my manager, and she helped me book other shows after Pippin, um, audition while I was on Pippin, send in self-tapes, all these things she helped me start like that. That's so cool. So yeah. you have been in three national tours. Yeah. So how did that affect the rest of your family? <sighs> well, I remember, I remember, well, I was at camp when I found that I got Pippin. Um, it was maybe like two months after I auditioned. I auditioned in May. I was in, um, no, I auditioned in March and I was at camp in June when I found out. Um, it was visiting weekend. My parents came and I remember they ran up to me and they were like, you booked Pippin and it was a huge deal. And I remember just, like, we were just sitting there in this cafeteria in the middle of um, Catskills of New York, like, figuring this out. Like, what are we going to do? 
all this stuff. And so my parents decided they couldn't come with me all the time because I ended up being on Pippin for nine months and then Sound of Music for two months. And I was on, for two whole years I was on tour. So we had to come up with a plan. Um, so my camp counselor there at camp, we actually, he was my favorite people ever. His name is uh, Bernard. And we, we went up to him and we were like, would you want to come on tour with me, be my legal guardian? Um, and so we made him my legal guardian and at first uh, it was just my mom, uh, my mom and my dad coming, actually no, my mom and I started in Fort Worth, Texas on Pippin. First three weeks was just me and her. Um, and then after, it was like a one week break and then after that me and Bernard went out and we were doing that and my parents would visit um, with my siblings on like spring break when they didn't have school. But other than that, it was mostly me and, Ber me and Bernard. <laughs> so then besides being able to hang out every day with Bernard, your favorite yeah. person, what were some other things that you just loved about being on the tour? God, I just, I loved being in a new city every week. Um, it was just, it was something I've always wanted to do. I just, I've, we never really took that many vacations as a family and I've always wanted just to see places and that's what I got to do. And I love food and I, every, every new city, my big thing was breakfast, like Saturday mornings before a matinee. I I'd, I'd like wake everybody up. I'd be like, we're going to breakfast. Because, I mean, on tour, you, you stay up late, like in the shows, and then you usually sleep late until you have to go to the show or go to do school or whatever. Um, and so I would wake up. I would wake everybody up, like all the other kids on tour, whether it was one or four others. And we'd go to breakfast, because I love breakfast. Food is good. Food is great, <laughs> exactly. Food is amazing. Yeah. So on a tour, three different ones. Um, mm -hmm. Were there any challenges that you faced? This could be personal struggles or even going from theater to theater and trying to adjust to blocking. Yeah, um, there, there were two, or at first it was just, like I was, I, I loved like the, everything that was happening, all this new stuff. Like I've, I've always loved change. I've never been against change. Um, but, I remember at first, I didn't think I was gonna be homesick or miss my family, because I've always, it's not like I've always been independent, but I've always liked to feel like I was, you know, that, that I took pride in that. Um, and I, but I remember it was, it was like my, my fourth week with Bernard, like away from my parents. And I just, it, we were about to go to Tokyo, because we, in Pippin, it, everything was just national in the country, but on Pippin we went to Tokyo and Amsterdam just because I guess they liked the show over there. Um, and we were about to leave for Tokyo, and I just, something hit me, like I was leaving the country, I was gonna be so far away from my parents, and I just started to miss them. But it wasn't until I came back home three weeks later after Tokyo that I never really got homesick again, because I would see them, and I'd be like, I'm gonna see you again, and all this. But the major struggle with touring was the fact that you would join this cast, and if you, and there's like, like on Pippin there would be like one other kid, right? And I liked that kid, but like what if I joined and that kid was a complete disaster, like, like he was horrible, he was a mean person. Um, Pippin wasn't like that, but I, I had met kids that I joined tour and they, they were either snobby or selfish or just things that would bother me that I just, I, I couldn't do. Um, and I'm glad I wasn't on Pippin, because Pippin was just one other kid. Um, but like on the other tours where there were multiple kids, there'd be like one or two of them that I just couldn't vibe with, you know? And that, was a, that would be a problem, especially going on tour for nine months or however long. Yeah, so then also on the tour, I'm sure you had to keep up with school. How did you manage your academics? Um, so it's, it's really easy being homeschooled or schooling outside of a physical school. Um, because Florida has FLVS, which is Florida Online Virtual School, which is not something that a lot of states have. So um, the the tour, the touring company, every touring company has a tutor um, for the kids, and they would usually also be like the backstage, like backstage making sure the kids are getting to their cues and all that. But every day from 12 to 4, um, we had to do school. There was, we had to get 15 hours of schooling in a week with that company tutor. And that company tutor would be there to help me, but I didn't really, I could have done it without the company tutor just because FLVS is so, so like, so great and self, and like you could do it all by yourself. Um, 
But the other kids, they were, having their, they were still enrolled in their schools at home. Their schools were sending them work. So the tutor would help them a lot, but because I had the computer and FLVS, it wasn't needed for me. But the tutor still had to be there to dock that I had those 15 hours every week. Okay, got it. So yeah. then you also mentioned that with the three tours, you were home, you were away from home yeah. for over two years or about two yeah. years. So when you came back home, was it weird for you? Yeah, it was, it was quite a change. I mean, I had been, I had been like on Pippin, it was their second year of touring, so they weren't always booking cities. So I had have like, I had like three one week breaks throughout it. So I would visit home. But after, after, and in between tours, I had like a month where I was home. But when I was home for good, I remember, I went straight to Frenchwood, straight to camp actually, from the end of Neverland, which I ended um, at the Broward Center in Fort Lauderdale. And I went straight to camp and everyone thought it was crazy. Um, and I went straight to camp and it was like, I, I had been around kids that were usually younger than me, but like three other kids. I had never been in a public school system or even like a private school system, even though it's smaller. I still had been only around three, four, five kids for two years straight. Um, so I went to camp and all of a sudden I'm surrounded by all these kids who are like, who have been through it all. They've, they've, been, they've been with other kids, Those, the, they've been judged. I don't know, like, I, there's like a lot of things that you miss out on from not going to school through middle school, because middle school is a time of change, like where people, they, they learn about themselves and all this stuff and I came back and it was just, it was new. Like I started learning about all these things, whether it's stuff I wanted to be a part of or not. And, and it, was just, it, it was a change. And I remember eighth grade, I didn't go to public school. I wanted to be, do something smaller. I went to Meyer Academy, um, about 20 kids in my grade, which was a nice transition and I loved those kids. It was a great year. Um, we even took like a two week trip to Israel, which was a big deal and was really great. And then freshman year, um, about two years after I ended, um, I went to Dreyfus and that was a big deal because it was public school system and camp, I remember camp helped me get used to all those kids, um, but it was, it was a big change. It was hard. So from all of your experiences in professional theater, what would you say is the biggest lesson you've learned or do you have any funny stories from your experiences? Yeah, um, I have some funny stories. Biggest lesson I've learned, that's, that's a hard, I've learned a lot of stuff. I'll start with a funny story. Um, so, so there'd be times on stage, especially like the hardest part about doing a show over and over again, is not is not losing like the authenticity of it, you know. Uh, and I would sometimes go on autopilot near the end because whether I was thinking about school, like there was a lot going on. I'd be thinking about school. I'd be thinking about, oh, my parents are in the audience tonight, all this stuff. Um, so I'd be on stage. There was just one time I was on stage and I was kind of an autopilot, kind of not, kind of like really meta, like thinking about, am I on autopilot? Like, like weird, weird stuff because you've been doing it so many times. And there's this line, um, where I say, in my British accent, of course, it's the darling house, and preparing the bed is Nana, the family dog. And instead, I said, it's the darling house, and preparing the dog is Nana, the family bed. And it was, it was like, it's not the type of thing that people in the audience notice, maybe like a few people. I remember my family was there that night, and my cousins, uh, after the show, my family, like they were like, I, I noticed what you did by accident. And, but it's more the type of thing that I'm like standing there, like talking to the audience, like darling house, whatever. And it's that type of thing where it's like, I'm with all these professionals on stage and I'm like out of the corner of my eye, like, did anyone hear that? And there's this ensemble member named Calvin who would stand right in front of me. Like I was standing on a bed, perched up and he was on the ground. And for like, from that time to the end of my run, maybe like a hundred shows left, every night he'd look up at me, like taunting me, like, you're gonna mess this one up again. You're gonna mess it up again. And he, like, he'd look up at me. And that, that would freak me out. But it's, it's funny when stuff like that happens because everyone makes mistakes, no matter how old they are, professionals. Like the lead, like he'd, he'd mess up sometimes. And it's, that's just what happens. And so that's, yeah. Now for the big lesson learned. <laughs> big lesson learned. I think, honestly, it, it's really just, it's really just like what I said about change. Like I, I, at the beginning, like I said, like 
I took pride in feeling independent, even though I wasn't necessarily independent, but it's more like I wanted to feel like I was, because I have an older sister, she's always been super independent, um, like actually independent, and I was like, I'm independent, and I started doing this, but I wasn't really at first, and I learned that. And then over time, I kind of felt like by the third tour, like all these new kids, I'd be like five other kids, and I kind of felt like the veteran at this point because I've been through it all. And that, and like helping those kids and kids helping me at the start of it, it kind of just like, it showed me that change, change is always possible, like no matter if you're, like you just have to be open to it, you know? You just have to be open to thing, to everything just switching around and, and you have to be ready for whatever comes your way and that was something I learned from doing this. That's great. So now, what are you up to? Now, I mean, I've been, I'm in my junior year, uh, freshman and sophomore year have been super fun. I've gotten, it's like, I think about everything in a totally different way now because of like how, what I've been through. Like I, I feel like I cherish like, just like, like seventh period a lot more than most kids appreciate seventh period because I didn't have a seventh period for a while. So I've just been joining high school and now um, I've actually, when I was on tour, I brought a ukulele with me um, and I was playing that like religiously for two years when I was on tour. I have a YouTube channel, like you can go back and with my high soprano voice, I'm playing pop songs on my ukulele in different hotel rooms every week. People will comment like, why do you keep switching rooms? And no one ever knew like what I was doing. But when I came off of tour, I, kind, I did like one, I did Brighton Beach Memoirs at a student, th at Starstruck, I went back to Starstruck. Um, but then I started playing open mic nights with my guitar. I switched to guitar after I came back. Um, and I did open mic nights in West Palm and uh, Fort Lauderdale, and then I kind of just got into like gigging at restaurants. So like last week I pre uh, played at this restaurant in West Palm called Grandview Market. Played for three and a half hours just for tips. Um, sometimes you get paid, sometimes just for tips. Um, but it, it felt nice like playing again after everything that's happening now. Uh, I'm at home writing songs. Um, I have this equipment in my room for producing songs. I've been producing music. Um, so it's kind of been a switch from musical theater to this songwriting music engineer kind of thing. Yeah, so what are your plans for the future? Do you want to go back into theater or are you going to follow your songwriting yeah. passions? I've always, I've, I've thought about this a lot and songwriting is something that I gravitate towards more than anything I've ever done. But musical theater, like, I just, I so much enjoy like, being on a stage and acting like somebody else, and I love watching theater. So that's something that I never really want to drift away from. So as, as long as I'm like, do, like doing like, mu like music, songwriting, I think I'll always be attached to theater in some way, whether it's regional theater wherever I am, or even like one day auditioning for Broadway and being in a Broadway show, like, I, I have no problem with that. I love it, you know? Yeah, do you have any projects or any auditions or gigs coming up? I've been, I, I, I auditioned for a few like TV show, I did a few self tapes like starting this year. Again, just cause, you know, why not? Like, it's fun. Um, I might possibly have a new thing coming up, maybe, but who you knows? Maybe. Know, maybe, maybe not, maybe, not, maybe <laughs> possibly. So, last question. Um, do you have any advice for those who are watching who want to pursue a career, whether it be in performance or songwriting or anything? Yeah, I mean, if you love it, just just go do it. You know, there's nothing there's nothing stopping you, um, and don't don't be afraid to start it. There's, I mean, there's student theaters. There's like you don't have to go straight to regional theaters, and if you feel like you you suck at it. Maybe you do, but you'll, you're going to get better. You're going to get great at it if you love it and you practice it. So anything's possible as long as you, you know, put the work in. Well, great. Thank you so much for being here. Of so nice to talk with you. Nice to talk with and you, too. I wish you the best of luck. Thanks, Kat. Tune in next time when we'll be talking to Fabi Aguirre, who appeared in the Broadway production of Les Mis as Little Cosette and the Broadway production of On Your Feet as Little Gloria. She did it. So can you.